I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. Big Dave, happy Friday, buddy. Happy Friday. So this week, our topic has been performance. A Millennial Monday, David did an episode on millennials, the self-care experts. During health huddles, we talked on meditation and performance. This week's Meeting of the Minds, we got deep into self-help. I hope you guys are all okay. And on Connection Thursday, yesterday's episode, we talked about creating unity consciousness and today, we will continue our book study of Michael Singer's Untethered Soul. So, any announcements or anything, Dave, we have going on? Uh, no, not much, guys. The new website will be launching very soon, if not already, because uh, we do we do obviously do this a day in advance. So, <laughs> we're hoping to have it launched by Friday, if not this weekend. Guys, if you do get a chance to see it, the link will be below. You just check it out. Uh, give us feedback. We want to make sure that this is the best experience for you. We're trying something a little new, um, and it's kind of exciting. Also, guys, we still obviously every single day we have the link below for the free 30 days in the community. Please go in there. We got the new modules up, and we also have the new lessons coming in. So you guys, community, you guys are doing awesome. They are. So in the Stress Mastery community, we will be finishing module two going into next week. <clears throat> that means the pause plan and lifestyle system will be completed. So next week I'll be talking about the stress responders, the resets, and the levels of the program. And then we'll get ready. So we will have our Q&A next week also. So we have a live Q&A every time we finish a module. So we'll have that next weekend. We will have a live Q&A um, getting together with you guys about answering questions on diet, exercise, pause plan, stress, whatever you guys want to talk about. So let's jump back into book the book study and we are studying the untethered soul by michael singer and we are now entering chapter 11. the title is pain the price of freedom so michael starts out one of the essential requirements for true spiritual growth and deep personal transformation is coming to peace with pain no expansion or evolution can take place without change and periods of change are not always comfortable. Change involves challenging what is familiar to us and daring to question our traditional needs for safety, comfort, and control. This is often perceived as a painful experience. Well, Dave, let's kick into that one a little bit, right? So he's absolutely right. And the pain is perceived. You understand what he said, perceived. And what he's saying here is we have these needs, which is the comfort zone, people. That's the programming for safety, comfort, and control. The moment you start to change anything and step outside that comfort zone, you are going to be uncomfortable. And that's what he's saying. This is often perceived as a painful experience. Remember, it's a perception. Anything you want to add to that? No, it's going cool. To be interesting. Okay, so <laughs> Michael continues. Becoming familiar with this path is part of your growth. Even though you may not actually like the feeling of the inner disturbance, you may be able to sit quietly inside and face them if you want to see where they come from. Once you can face your disturbances, you will realize there's a layer of pain seated deep in the core of your heart. This pain is so uncomfortable, so challenging, and so destructive to the individual self that your entire life is spent avoiding it. Your entire personality is built upon ways of being, thinking, acting, and believing that were developed to avoid pain. So, let's touch on that one, David, because he's kind of hitting right in. I want everybody that is studying stress mastery to understand. What he's talking about and, he, and I'll go back, it says, this pain is so uncomfortable, so challenging, and so destructive to the individual self. That is the ego person. That is your perception. That is your identity. That is the ego. That's what he's talking about. Because the moment that you face the disturbances, 
you begin to destroy the ego. Yeah. Anything you want to add? No, that's good. I don't remember this. So Michael continues. You don't remember this? No. Oh, so you're going to... Yeah, so you're, you're kind of listening yeah. in. So Michael continues. Since avoiding the pain prohibits you from exploring the part of your being that is beyond that layer, real growth takes place when you finally decide to deal with the pain. Because pain is at the core of the heart, it radiates out and affects everything you do. But this pain is not physical pain that you receive as a message from your body. Physical pain is only there when something physiologically wrong. Inner pain is always there, underneath, hidden by the layers of our thoughts and emotions. We feel it most when our hearts go into turmoil, like when the world does not meet our expectations. This is an inner psychological pain. The psyche is built upon avoiding this pain, and as a result, it has fear of pain as its foundation. That is what caused the psyche to be. To understand this, notice that if the feeling of rejection is a major problem for you, you will fear experiences that cause rejection. That fear will become part of your psyche. And I just want to add in there, it becomes part of your identity. It becomes part of the ego. He continues, even though the actual events causing rejection are infrequent, you will have to deal with the fear of rejection all the time. That is how we create pain that is always there. If you're doing something to avoid pain, then pain is running your life. All your thoughts and feelings will be affected by your fears. You will come to see that any behavior pattern based upon the avoidance of pain becomes a doorway to pain itself. If you're afraid of being rejected by someone and you approach that person with the intention of winning their acceptance, you are skating on thin ice. All they have to do is look at you sideways or say the wrong thing and you will feel the pain of rejection. The bottom line is that since you approach them in the, in the name of rejection, now this is important because we talked about that in self-help. In the self-help episode, we talked that if you are, you know, call yourself a procrastinator and you're studying procrastination, you actually increase procrastination, it's your focus. So what Michael is saying here, the bottom line is he says that since you approach them in the name of rejection, so your focus at approaching this person is not to be rejected. You're focused on rejection. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. So what are you going to get? Here we go. <laughs> you're go so he, the bottom line is that since you approach them in the name of rejection, you're going to be dancing on the edge of rejection throughout the entire interaction. One way or another, the feelings you experience will work their way back in, to the motive behind your actions. The avoidance of pain is what your actions are linked to, and you will feel the link to your heart. So that's, okay, I'm sorry I'm stopping so much, but it's such a good teaching for what we teach in the Steps of Stress Mastery, Head, Heart, and Hand. He says, the avoidance of pain is what your actions are linked to, and you will feel that link in your heart. When a program activates, you feel it in the heart. Mm -hmm. That's why the let go technique is about focusing on the heart. And we talked about the science behind that. The science behind that is, is that when a program's activated and the thoughts begin in your head, you know it's activated because you feel it in your heart. And the heart has to communicate back to the head brain that we're in that rejection state. Yeah. So what happens every time you are in this avoidance that Michael Singer's talking about is you're going to feel it in the heart. Make sense? Yeah. So he continues. The heart is where pain comes from. And this is why you feel so many disturbances as you go through the day. You have this core of pain deep in your heart. You, your personality traits and behavior patterns are all about avoiding this pain. You avoid it by keeping your weight a certain way, wearing certain clothes, talking in a certain way, choosing a certain hairstyle. Everything you do is about the avoidance of this pain. If you want to validate this, just see what happens if someone mentions your weight or criticizes your clothes. You feel pain. Every time you do something in the name of avoiding pain, that something becomes a link that holds the potential for pain you're avoiding. So again, absolutely, right? We all 
dress and act toward our identity. And if somebody goes against that identity. Yeah, we even do that with uh, like self deprivating humor. Oh, we do it just because it's it's our underlying reason. Like we'll make a joke about our own weight or yep. you know, not being smart because it's easier for us to deal with the pain of us joking about it versus someone else. And you're actually in pain. Yeah. Yes. So Michael continues. If you do not want to deal with the pain at its core, then what you do to avoid it had better work. If you're hiding yourself in a busy social life, then anything, anyone does that challenges your self-esteem, such as not inviting you to an event, will cause you to feel the pain. Let's say you call a friend to go to see a movie, and they say they're busy. Some people feel hurt by that. You will feel pain if the reason you called them was the avoidance of pain. Let's say you go outside and you call your dog. Hey, Spot, come here. And he doesn't come. If the reason you called Spot was to feed him, you just put the bowl down and let him eat when he wants. But if you called Spot because you had a hard day and Spot didn't come, you would feel pain. Even the dog doesn't like me, is what you would say. Why would there be heartfelt pain in the dog not coming? Why would there be pain in a friend saying they are going someplace else and they can't go to the movie today? How does that generate pain? It is because deep inside there is pain that you have not processed. Your attempt to avoid this pain has created layer upon layer of sensitivities that are all linked to the hidden pain. Let's take a moment to see how these layers build up. In order to avoid the pain of rejection, you work hard to maintain friendships. Since you've seen that it is possible to get rejected, even by friends, you are going to work harder and harder to avoid it. To succeed, you have to be sure everything you do is acceptable to others. This determines how you dress and how you act. Notice, you're no longer focused directly on rejection. Now it's about your clothes how you walk, what you drive. You've gone another layer further away from the core pain. If somebody comes up to you and says, wow, I thought you could afford a nicer car than that, you feel a disturbing reaction. How could that cause pain? What the big, what's the big deal if somebody says something about your car? You have to ask yourself, what it, what it is that's reacted in your heart. What is that feeling? Why is that happening? People don't normally ask why. They just try to keep it from happening. He's getting on a touchy subject talking about cars. Yep. <laughs> you feel that ever? <laughs> I felt that before. Yes, I know you have. <laughs> For sure I know you have. And that and it's amazing what he's saying here because this chapter is very important, and it'll take us two episodes to get through this chapter, because I am not rushing this book, as you can see. Normally, we finish a book in a quarter. Yeah. We're already in the second quarter of this book, but I'm taking my time because it matches a lot what we're teaching, especially where we're at now in the podcast. You, When we don't deal, anytime you don't deal with discomfort and you push it down, whether it's through food, alcohol, or avoidance, like he's talking about, you don't get rid of it. It's still underlying in your psyche. It's still disconnecting you from you. So he continues, you must go deeper than that and look at the dynamics of the layers that have been created. At the core, there is the pain. Then in order to avoid the pain, you try to stay busy with friends, hide in their acceptance. That is the first layer out. Then in order to assure yourself acceptance, you try to present yourself in a certain way so that you can win friends and influence people. That is another layer out. Each layer is attached to the original pain. This is why simple, everyday interactions can affect you so much. If the core pain was not the motivation behind proving yourself each day, what people say would not affect you. But since avoiding the core pain is why you're trying to prove yourself, you end up bringing the potential for pain into everything that happens. You end up so sensitive that you are unable to live in this world without getting hurt. You cannot even interact with people or do 
other normal daily activities without events affecting your heart. If you watch carefully, you will see that even simple interactions often cause some degree of pain, insecurity, or general disturbance. You get some distance from this. You first, wait, before I start, the gym. This is, if I have to say where it hits me, it might hit you in cars, you know, hit me in the gym, <laughs> right? In the gym, you know, and it's funny because people don't talk to me in the gym, but they look. Yeah. It's certain looks, and it's funny to watch. If I have to pick one place in my day where Barry might be on most edge, Barry's my ego for new listeners, it's in the gym. And it's funny because in the gym, is a space where I rule. I rule that that space. I'm so comfortable in that space. Mm -hmm. Yet, I protect that space. It's crazy. It's crazy. If you want to, I, I actually, I think it's funny sometimes the way he acts up. Because I see it and I let it go, but I see it. I can see him act up. Now I watch Brett, who's very strong in the ego right now, in the gym, right? Wow. If he doesn't get a, if he misses a lift, you would think that his world came to an end. Oh, Do you remember yeah. those days? Oh. I mean, he tried He tried to hit 315 the other day on the bench, and it just wasn't happening. He was so mad. Why? You got all those other lifts that were positive, and this one lift screwed you all up. Remember those days? Oh, yeah. I definitely do. <clears throat> that doesn't happen anymore to me. It really doesn't. If I don't get it, I'm fine. You know? So, Michael continues. To get some distance from this, you first need to get some perspective. Walk outside on a clear night and just look up into the sky. You're sitting on a planet spinning around spinning around in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Though you can see a few thousand stars, there are hundreds of billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy alone. In fact, it is estimated that there are over a trillion stars in the spiral galaxy. And that galaxy would look like one star to us, if we could even see it. You're just standing on one little ball of dirt and spinning around one of the stars. From that perspective, do you really care what people think about your clothes or your car? Do you really need to feel embarrassed if you forgot someone's name? How can you let these meaningless things cause pain? If you want out, if you want a decent life, you had better not devote your life to avoiding psychological pain. You had better not spend your life worrying about whether people like you or whether your car impresses people. What kind of life is that? It is a life of pain. You may not think that you feel pain that often, but you really do. To spend your life avoiding pain means it's always right behind you. At any point, you could slip and say the wrong thing. At any point, anything can happen. So you end up devoting your life to the avoidance of pain. So when he's talking about how those things, you don't think that you're in pain, I'm going to tell you this. Every single time you're caught in stress and you're stressed out, which means that you're in a story of stress, you are in pain. Because yeah. every single time that happens, there's programs activated and the ego is telling you a story. You're in pain. Being in pain simply is being disconnected. We talked about unity consciousness yesterday. That's what's being in pain. You're uncomfortable. You think it's normal because you have so much stress in your life that you actually think being stressed out is part of life. It's not. Yeah. That's pain. Mm -hmm. So he continues. Once you look inside yourself and start to own this, you will see that you are... Back to the same two foundational choices. One choice is to leave the pain inside and continue to struggle with the outside. The other choice is to decide that you don't want to spend your entire life avoiding the inner pain. you rather get rid of it. Few people ever dare to turn the process inside like this. Most people don't even realize that they are running around with pockets of pain inside that need to be worked out. Do you really want to carry that inside and have to manipulate the world to avoid feeling it? What would your life be like if there, if it wasn't run by the pain? You'd be free. You'd walk around the world completely free, just having fun, 
just being comfortable with whatever happens. You can actually live a life of full, a full life of interesting experiences and just enjoy these experiences whatever they are. In essence, you can simply live your life and experience what it's like to be on the planet that is spinning around the middle of nowhere until you die. So I want to leave it there, Mike. I think I want to leave it there because I might, let me just look. I just want to make sure I'm not screwing anybody up. No, that's perfect. Let's leave it here, Dave, so we can pick it up next time. And let's talk about this a little bit and expand on what he's saying. So we talked a little bit about, and you talked about it, how self-help gives you some easy steps to follow because it gives you an illusion of success, would you say? Yeah, it's a pat on the back, essentially. It's superficial. And so we talk about shifting. Shifting is about releasing the programs that have caused you to what you want to get rid of. What do I mean? So why do people start self-help? They want to find happiness or they want to become more productive. They want to become more focused. They want to become more successful. They have all these things that they want, right? And so they go into self-help. Well, the thing, the difference in shift coaching than this type of treatment is, is what Michael Singer is talking about. I actually want you to go into what is causing you the disruption, that's causing you to procrastinate, that's causing you to feel what you're feeling. Because that's the only way you can shift and change your life. You can do the superficial thing and do these superficial exercises and say, yeah, I set goals. Okay, did you achieve your goals? Well, no, because of this or that or that this happened, this person. There's a million and one reasons that you'll have why you didn't achieve your goals. And the truth is this, you didn't achieve your goals because you weren't focused on your goals. Being focused on your goals means you're adjusting those on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. And what is the purpose of goals? To drive your actions to where you want to be. How you get there is not your problem. Identity-based goal setting is different. Higher goal setting is different because you want to assume the identity of already having it. You're not missing something. This is where pain comes from. People comes from, they, they want to go into self-help because they feel like they're missing something. Something's missing in your life. Well, my question is, What's causing you to feel that that is missing? And it's always a program. Mm -hmm. And our programs are what make up our identity, which makes up our perception of the world. And what he's talking about is, if you touch those programs, you're touching, you're going to feel pain. If somebody touches those programs, you're going to feel pain. If your identity is, I'm a champion car guy. And somebody says, wow, Car is not that all, all that. What are you gonna feel? <laughs> now or before, I'd be upset because it went oh, against somebody. your identity, yeah. right? So then you have to go. Okay, why am I a car guy? Well, I want to be approved of. I enjoy this. I want to. I want to be acknowledged that I have this, right? That's what creates pain: the want of approval, the want to belong, the want of security. The want of control. Those wants are what construct your ego. And the ego, it, its life depends on you avoiding the things that make you uncomfortable. Yeah, I think that's that's the exact same reason why we were just talking about the self-help, making these easy goals. Because if you're completely just crushing all your goals, you might want to look back and see if they were too easy to begin with. And if they are, you're avoiding pain by setting goals that are almost impossible to fail because you're scared of failure and failure causes pain. The one thing that I really picked up from this uh, chapter was, or for what we got so far, is that the pain is going to be inevitable regardless, but the suffering part is optional. And that's when we keep on bearing it down and bearing it down. And that's suffering. The fact that you're living with it 5, 10, 15, or your entire life, that's suffering. If you're cons consistently feeling that pain, you know, throughout these experiences, you know, that pop up versus dealing with it, you know, a few times, you know, maybe a few years, 
to let it go, and eventually it's gone. It will that, leave. Exactly. It, it may take two, three, four, five times. It may take a full year. It may take however long it takes, but it's not suffering because you're dealing with it. And here's the great thing I'll tell you. So once you notice the program, this is why you name your ego and you do the let go technique, even when you're uncomfortable, you are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. What that means is there's not a story in your head that's trying to drag you and drag this uncomfortable feeling along. Every time you become present and you see it, you're releasing it. Even though it might still be in the body, you're in it. You're not being dragged along with a story about how you're a victim. That's the important part of it all. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Those links are right below the show. Also, for those that are interested in coming in and seeing what the Stress Mastery community is all about, that link is below the show there. Also, soon the website will be up where it's very easy for you to get into. We're working on that now. But till then, click on the link because that will be the only place that you can get the pause plan lifestyle system because it doesn't release officially till 2020. Only people in the community and clients are getting this program now. As always, until next time, stay inspired.